Welcome to Cottbus. Before you start your tour, please accept some piece of good advice to make the guide easier to use. It's possible to interrupt the playback anytime by pressing the pause button. If you hear that sound, you should use this function after the direction to the next station are given to you. Please take forward the playback after arriving at the next station. In case you want to resume a passage, you must press and hold the skip button to rewind till the part you want to hear again is arising. Have a nice day in Cottbus with this audio-visual tour. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, please give me your kind permission to introduce myself. My name is Hermann Ludwig Heinrich, Prince of Pukla Muskau. I will open up my performance by quoting a remark. My old beloved fellow Johann Wolfgang von Goethe wrote about my person. Here and now, an excellent personality is introduced to us. Within his best years, an about 40-year-old fellow, born on a higher level, where you don't have to slave away with attaining a certain standard, and where you are allowed to get the opportunity to be the architect of your own future at a very early time. Hmm. And he was right. I have ever formed my destiny on my own and to my complete satisfaction. I rather think so. I have created my own little kingdom. And it is a very special pleasure for my person to give a pretty warm welcome to you as my special guest. And I will be your guide to an extraordinary park standing on top of the world. So, welcome, welcome, bienvenue to my home. Welcome, welcome. Bienvenue to Branitz Park Estate. Well, that moment we are standing inside the heart of Branitz, the estate's buildings. The park's inside area and even the farmland are managed from that central point. Following the British example, I created a so-called ornamental farm. There is a complete circle of used farmland around the core of the park's area, managed and cultivated by my farmer's hands. All necessary buildings can be found on the estate's area. Sheep coats, cow sheds, stables, and even houses for the farmers and the estate servants are available. And it is even taken care for the security of my servants by raising a fire station and a prison on the estate's area. Sometimes free-range dogs disturb the idyll of Branitz's estate, 
In that case, my special Branitz estate's guards had special permission to shoot at them. <laughs> For that reason, please, in your own interest, put your doggy fellows on the lead. Please follow my path throughout the way inside Branitz Park. At the first fork in the road, we go to the left, and a little far away, you can discover the park's smithy. That will be the destination of our walkthrough, and it is quite easy to reach it. Please follow the way you are still strolling on, leading to even that destination. So, be my guest. The smithy was finished in 1849 and built on the inspiration of the English neo-Gothic style. <laughs> Surely you have recognized the Middle Eastern influence on the building's method of construction. With the little towers you see, it really seems to be a little cozy castle. It has been used for about 80 years and my blacksmith was responsible for a huge amount of work in and outside the estates and the park. Shoeing my horses and putting metal fittings on the coach's wheels and lots more. Not long ago, a partly gold-plated door was located that place. <laughs> and the blacksmith was the door house. High-ranking personalities were greeted by my person, that place. In 1854, Wilhelm I, King of Prussia, visited Branitz and had his coach brought up to the castle through just that, hmm, let me say, golden gate. Today, the research station of the foundation First Pückler Museum Park and Schloss Branitz can be found within the rooms of the park's blacksmith. Our next destination on our walk through is that first chain of hills over there, the so-called Black Hills. We are walking through the main path along Smithy's Meadows. And at the first fork, we are leaving the main path to, yeah, to the right. On the other hand, a milestone shows us the way back to the castle. At the crossing in front of the bridge, some beautiful trees have formed themselves in a very, very strange way. And that elevation you are looking at was thrown up by digging up Black Sea. <laughs> and for that reason, it was named hmm, Black Hill. But perhaps you are rather familiar with its additional name. Hill of the Buried Farmer. Oh no, naturally I have never buried a real farmer, dead or alive, that place. Perhaps the very short and <clears throat> very unimportant thing about the farmer named Christian Golnik was the force behind that name. <clears throat> At this point... <clears throat> Please give me your kindest permission for stating a short advice to you. Whatever this farmer Golnik has reported to you, please, my beloved audience, give no penny to this fairy tales. Sorry. Sorry, I, I have to calm down. 
Hmm. This tricky guy has made the bold remark of my person pulling the wool over his bloody eyes. Many times I have offered him a huge amount of money only to enlarge my estate's area. But every time I try to, he refused. He refused to sell his poor farm to me. Well, very nasty guys admit that I have only thrown up Black Hills not to see him anymore. Well, no. Nevertheless, it was rather suitable for me and my aim as well. Because of his mullishness, I instructed a scarecrow to this landlord to keep him his illusions of selling his farmland for a factory unit, which was planned long time ago. <laughs> But that impression was less promising for him. And for that reason, in 1857, the farmer finally gave the way to it and sold his farmland to me. <laughs> What a guy! <laughs> well, however, the Black Hills fits extraordinarily good into the whole impression of the park. Well now, let us go. There is much more to discover on the line. A path lined by a wooden balustrade winds itself along the hillside. And we follow that way. After the hillside, we are crossing the bridge and keep ourselves mm, to the right hand. Now follow me, please. The Black Sea is waiting for us. In 1847, the Black Sea has already got its final form and cultivation. Please look on the light of the sun being caught by the foliage of the trees standing around the lake. I think It seems that the lake seems to be black like midnight. Please step a little forward and look at the castle's reflection on the lake's surface. It is more than delightful and charming. The Swans House is situated on a small island within the lake. It is designed by myself in a kind of Swiss style. I have seen houses like that on my journey to Italy. Thus I have made a reproduction on that Italian example. You can even see our next destination from here if you are looking to the right. The chain of hills, the so-called Moonlight Mountains. On the next fork on the way, we keep ourselves on the left way and stop beyond the hills. By the way, it is time for a special kind of gymnastics. Come on, let's climb up the hill and we'll meet again under the moonlight shadows on the top. <music> Every time I go for a walk, and with it those hills of moonlight, I have been reminded by to recall my journey to the Far East. <laughs> What an adventure! It seems to me like yesterday, traveling to the Far East. In the beginning, there was a life-to-death confrontation with Major Karl Heinrich Adolf von Kersel. 
who feel insulted in his honor by a little phrase I have written in my book Tutti Frutti. And this confrontation was the whole and ultimate reason for me traveling to Africa. Cause this stubborn old idiot Major Corsell has kept me up at the Belgian frontier at Vervier for such a long time that I have passed my ship to America. But finally, hmm, finally it was a stroke of very, very good fortune for me, looking at the various experience I have never had without that stroke. By the way, I had about 12 confrontations like that one. And I have always been victorious. Well, in February 1835, my ship reached the port of Algiers, heavily armed by horse and dressed in the fascinating Far Eastern way, we took a ship at Bone, which is today well known as Anaba and we traveled to Tunis and to the local masters. The governor of Tunis, Mustafa al-Hussein, gave me an audience inside his palace. It was not very difficult to improve our relations that way that we became the dearest friends. After having spent a beautiful New Year's Eve of 1837 at Crete, I went back to Egypt, back to the continent, back to the fascinating Africa. I have lodged as wise King Ali Pasha's special and royal guest for two years and was welcomed and received by His Royal Highness with all royal honors. By the time I was released from the burden of financing my standard of living. I had my own palace with slaves and servants making all my wishes come true that gave me the freedom to scout this exotic country. The pyramid are even the most fascinating buildings humanity ever created and built on this earth. And I, I was not able to resist the temptation like all my fellows before. <laughs> Therefore, the name of my faithful sweetheart, Princess Lucy, <laughs> signed the top of the Cheops Pyramid <laughs> as one of the first Europeans I traveled through the southern parts of the country along the riverside and the banks of the Nile and afterwards on a trip to the heart of Sudan only the strains of that journey have put hmm, have put an end to the whole discovery with the new one knowledge and the various fantastic experiences which had been in my mind for a very, 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 very long time, I started traveling home in 1840. <laughs> Raised up a thatched summer house on those hills, crowned by a half moon, such as keeping watch over those hills up to now. Please, please let us take place there and rest for a while. Nearby there had been the famous stairs spruce. Please put a piece, only a piece of your imagination on that very, very special and exceptional experience of panorama. Even His Royal Highness Wilhelm I of Prussia was delighted and fascinated by the idea of putting stairs on trees. <laughs> <laughs> 
Be careful. Now the way is getting a little more difficult. Please give me kind permission to walk on through. It's better for me and for you. We are leaving the hills to the left, towards the main path we are following on. We are keeping ourselves on the right hand until we are reaching a slight bend. There the way leads us directly to the funeral of my heirs at law, which is marked by a huge crucifix in the middle of the path. <laughs> When I first came to Branitz, in the age of 60, Branitz Castle and estate has been in the ownership of my family for 149 impressing years. <laughs> I, I have to admit that my behavior in younger years has not come up to the expectations of the society. <laughs> my waste of money really forced my parents to cut their final contributions. You can say with complete justification that I was a rebellious young noble boy. But later on, yes, I regret to say that sometime my father was the mortal enemy of my whole lifetime. But with the heir, I have come to power over the estates and <clears throat> the indebtedness as well. To have to sell Moscow was one of the hardest things to do for me. But finally, there was no way to prevent. But I will prevent Branitz's estate from their destiny. My cousin, Heinrich, Count of Pückler Muskau, will get the estate. And that aims I'm not able to reach. He will finish up. It is very good to know that my heir will come into a good hand. Please keep a little calm on setting your footsteps, cause now we are going to follow the way leading us directly to Snake's Lake, right from the caves. We are going to the next crossing and we will pass to the right towards another crossing. This time, we turn to the right, towards the banks of the Snake's Lake. Please do not be afraid of putting the lake under further examination. Perhaps, with a little patience and a little attention, which have ever been abilities of a real prince, a very, very, very small resident of the park's area is waiting for you and looking at you. Many energetic hands were necessary for digging up the lake. Even convicts were doing their work that place. Certainly, they were provided properly. I think they had a much better life than with any other employee. Beside the sea, one of the biggest elevation of the whole area is located. The Hermans Mountain. Unfortunately, I was not able to finish that work. Because of its cultivation, the mountain is an especially beautiful monument in summer. And it gives us a very beautiful panorama on the pyramids area. Now we are going along just one or two steps heading the pyramid, our next destination. And there 
we stop for a while. Do you agree with me that this is an enormous symbol of my royal power and creativity? Pyramids are causing a specific kind of fascination for us. The journey to the Far East inspired me to realize my work. On the example of the Nubian grave hills of Meroe, I have raised the pyramid until 1862. On top of the pyramid, the following words you find in the following cast iron stroke. Graves are tops of mountains leading into another world. We should make a little break to surround the pyramids and enjoy the panorama. It's taking your breath away. I give you my promise. Western direction, the tumulus, my grave, is situated in the middle of the lake. Ancient life and ancient death, I am accustomed to say. It was built as a monument to overcome the next 1,000 years. It was built up in... 18, 1856 by my workers within a very short period and then fixed with earth plates. The Egyptians used to say that pyramids are gates into another world. The imagination of my rotten bones <laughs> sounds rather frightening to me. For that reason my heart was separated from the body and both corroded by chemicals and brought into the tumulus inside a coppered urn and a sink made coffin. The 9th of February was a very cold day. The lake was completely frozen. Over a footbridge my mortal remains were finally brought into the wooden burial chamber inside the tumulus. The last note in my personal diary in December 1870 has turned to the result of my entire life. Practicing arts is the highest and noblest passion in lifetime because it is practice for the benefit of the whole humanity. I have spent all my efforts in lifetime for practicing this aim within the empire of nature. And this aim will overcome my death. But now, my beloved audience, please let us all blow those dark ideas away. Because another aim is waiting for us. <laughs> Please follow me along the waistline, passing the pyramid lake to the right and then crossing the bridge to the left. The racing hill is the next highlight on our way and visible with its parasol on top. Some time ago, there was only a small bench out of stone standing on even that hill. Today, this parasol with its thatched roof protects us from the rays of the sun. By the way, 
It was created by my cousin, Count Henry of Pückler, at the turn of the 19th century. Are you as enthusiastic for horse riding as I am? The hill was used as a vantage point. It was situated as the end of a race course around the pyramids area. I'm very sorry that there will never be any kind of race. But inside my stables you can find the noblest horses and other kind of coach animals as well. For example, someday <laughs> I had the idea going for a ride inside the center of Berlin in a coach carried by four deer. Would you please imagine the stir caused by this appearance throughout the whole country? But a real prince has the obligation to be well known and popular. If you are willing, we are leaving the race course and following the main path to the right. After only a few steps in eastern direction, we are reaching the Shelf Lake. From that point, you will have the pleasure of enjoying an excellent view on the castle, which is about 100 meters away from you. <music> of silent weather you are able to see the castles and the park's reflection on the whole surface of the lake. About 60 up to 70 workers were engaged within the park's area at the same time. In 1971 the garden architect Helmut Rippel estimated the amount of earth which was moved within the park to be about tremendous 100,000 cubic meters. Now, the way leads us over the bridge nearby. Behind that bridge, a path is winding itself around the lake. If we follow that way, an upright crucifix on top of the holy hill appears. Originally wooden, there is now a steel-made construction set upright on even that place. Please regard this as a, a yes, as a symbol for my mixed impressions concerning all kinds of religion. Either the Christian Church or the religion of the Far East. Please keep on walking through. At once we are facing the driveway. We keep going on a little quantum of footsteps to the left. And afterwards, we fork off onto the smaller path, which leads us to the left side again, and then on direct way across two crossroads and over a little wooden bridge to our next destination, the greenhouses. <laughs> There are five greenhouses, the main house, the blue house, the pineapple house and the tree's nursery. Above all, the greenhouses had been used for growing up pineapples. Sometimes the harvest was good enough to sell the fruit in the estate's building. 
and even the Prussian aristocratic ladies in and around Berlin felt in love with those kinds of fruit, carefully packed as a lover's present and bought by my personal postillon d'amour, it has made the hearts of many ladies yearning. <laughs> No lady I have ever fixed my eyes on should be able to say that I have never smiled upon by the culinary ecstasies of a real prince. And even the future German emperor, the Prussian princess Augusta, was lucky enough to receive one of those famous pineapples. But naturally, even trees had been raised within those greenhouses for planting them within and thus cultivating Branitz estate's gardens. Before moving there, Branitz could have been likely compared with a desert, a desert without any kind of beauty. And for that reason, you can estimate the challenge I was faced with. But I was victorious. My esteemed friend and biographer, Ludmilla Assing, wrote a bit later, he has made a paradise out of a sandy desert. <laughs> and indeed, the strains had been enormously. Lakes had been created and built. Hills had been thrown up and whole clusters of trees had been set to move. Men say the most important tool for the landscape's architect is the axe. And I used it with real care. During the 19th century, the Brits created a method to move even the biggest trees from one point to another without any problems. And as a landscapes artist full of thirst for knowledge, I have improved that method to a higher level. The wagon I used for replanting my trees had the impressing size of 1.60 meters in diameter. Within the estate's area, you can admire a reproduction of that wagon. In the first four years of working in that park, I removed about 400 trees from Branitz and the Branitz area. <laughs> Now we are following the main path to the right, crossing the next three bridges, passing the bust of my father-in-law, Karl August Prince of Hardenberg, and, after crossing the last bridge, climbing up the Hill of Roses on a certain hidden path on the right hand. <music> I think this place gives us the best offer to rest and to enjoy the panorama of the castle and the pleasure ground. Please take a rest for a while and enjoy the view surrounded by the roses flavor in the air. <laughs> this place is rather good enough for a romantic tete-a-tete, -tete, you know. The Hill of Rose and its cultivation has been in existence since 1847. <laughs> But the efforts to find a gardener in Branitz who had only a little knowledge of planting and cultivating roses had been <laughs> as difficult as the adventures Hercules had to pass. But nothing 
has ever been able to resist my aims, I fervently claimed. In 1869, on exactly that place, where tables and chairs are placed today, a pillar was rising above the hill. But today, only its foundations remained. The ways you can see in front on the meadow is a reproduction of an antique one, which was found during an excavation in Tivoli in the 18th century. The pieces had been put together by Sir William Hamilton, British ambassador at Tivoli that time. Later on, his nephew, the Earl of Warwick, took possession of the ways and gave his name to it, by the way. I was honored by having a look on the original. Hm. Unfortunately, it was not for sale. But a very good reproduction was made especially for me. By the time I would have loved to become a diplomat, and I am convinced of my ability to represent my country properly. Very, very often I have called myself in mind of my father-in-law. Perhaps it was due to my hmm, personality or to the lack of sympathy from his side. However, I have never received any diplomatic honor. And that was no good decision from his side. Now we are leaving the hills, accompanied by the smell of the beautiful roses and visiting the most favorable part of the estate, the royal stables. You can recognize the sculptures on both sides of the western gables. The paradise on earth is on the back of horses. The writer Mr. von Bodenstedt said once upon a time, Every man and woman who have ever spent the time with this kind of sport will agree to his words on all counts. I have built up a very impressing royal stable for my private paradise. Unfortunately, I am not able to show my favorite horse to you, for my beloved Adjame, my favorite Arabian mare, well behaved, beautiful, and intelligent as well. There is no other horse on the world like that one. In my royal position, it is an obligation to have a stable with noble horses like I have, because it is a kind of representation of my standard of living. Twelve of the best coach and racing horses can be found within my stables. Certainly, they were only reserved for high-ranking special guests. And, my dearest friends, I enjoyed riding very often because it is a pleasure for body and soul and gives an impression of freedom and complete adventure. And even my age will never keep me away from riding the most dangerous tracks. If you have the possibility to visit Dresden, you have to have a look on the so-called Brühlschen Terrassen <laughs> to jump into the Elbe from that point by horse is a fabulous experience. And it seems that it has never done any harm to me. 
and I was never afraid of breaking down my personal frontiers and becoming more and more popular to the audience. When the whole world started to take possession of heaven, <laughs> I first went to Berlin and then to heaven. No, by balloon. <sighs> well, I miss that time so much when my lifetime was filled with adventure. By the way, the stables are often accommodating exhibitions, and thus it is worth to give a little hand and look on them. Furthermore, I have ever been a special supporter of the fine arts. There is a statuette placed on the eastern gable. It is Thalia, the muse of all actors and acting in general. She is holding a mask in her hand. I have never had any aversions against artificial and sparkling productions. And due to that reason, later on, during my, well, let me say, years of retirement, I used to welcome my special guests in my Far Eastern dress. <laughs> Come on now, there are further sights waiting for you. Do you agree with me quoting that the arbor shows a very impressing panorama to us? Please, let us take a little walk under its shadow. This part of Branitz was not open to the public. The arbor between the royal stables and the Chevalier's house marked a very intimate area of my park, which was only reserved for my person and specific guests. <laughs> but I think I can give you permission to walk and rest for a while that place. About 16 reliefs made of terracotta are set into the walls of the arbor, inspired by the sculptures of Bertel Torvaldsen. When I was young, I have visited him in his domain at Rome. That place I even met Antonio Canova, who created the marble Venus Italica, which has found its plaster cast in the middle of Branitz Park. The Venus Italica is the patron scent of love and gardening as well. In my lifetime, she was rising out of an ocean of flowers. And I think that even Canova would have been very proud of me. But certainly there is quite more to see. The various reliefs are showing mythical creatures and are playing with the visitor's fantasy. There is Hulas, attracted by the nymphs and the power of love pictured with armors ruling the whole world. These romantic pictures are showing an extraordinary passion for lifetime. <laughs> I give you advice to enjoy a little momentum under these lovely arcades. And if you are prepared to, I will proudly present you my property's highlight, my castle. <laughs> The family's coat of arms of Pückler Muskau is emblazoned over the castle's main entrance. Despite the estate has been owned by our family since 1696, but even one human life later, between 1770 and 71, the castle was built by my father. <laughs> Please. 
imagine the measure of disappointment when I arrived at Branitz and perceived the horrible condition of that castle. It was brought to the brink of ruin and completely dilapidated. The area of the park reminded me more of a parrot ground than a park's area. But nevertheless, that fact was no reason for slowing down my unbroken thirst for action. You can even change a parrot ground into a beautiful jewel. With a little help from a group of very popular architects, for example the famous Gottfried Semper, the reconstruction of the inner and outer parts of the castle could be finished within a few years. <laughs> There had been no structural changes made on the outside parts of the castle. The facade of the castles and the estate's buildings became a pink painting. The formerly red tiles were colored with black tar and the inside decoration was built under my personal direction. Certainly, only the best kinds of materials and furniture have been taken for the inside decoration of my home, and even the decoration of the walls is made from the best kinds of wood. You should definitely spend a little time for walk through the rooms of my castle. Even the furnishings of the library are worth spending time for a visit. Compositions of Clara Schumann and Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi have been played on the piano inside that extraordinarily decorated music room. The rooms of the castle are accommodating exhibitions about well-known artists, writers and personalities of our times, such as Kleist, Goethe and Blechen. And inside the vestibule you can see the ancestral portraits of my ancestors. <laughs> Now, please follow me around the castle. From the terrace you are allowed to enjoy an excellent panorama over the castle slate into the park's inside area. The flight of steps and the terrace showing the inside area of the park to us are laid out lately according to the wishes of my sweetheart, Princess Lucy, and forming a wonderful completion. On the small island inside the castle's lake, the plaster cast of the Venus of Capua holds our notice. On the other side of the lake, the rose arbor, even named Kiosk, frames the scene. I have put up the bust of the famous singer Henrietta Sontag inside. She was a person of outstanding beauty. And for that reason, I had a very huge passion for her, not only in an artificial way. Since I have seen her twice on stage, once a time in Berlin and the second time in London, from that moment I was impressed by her. But unfortunately, she married a Sardinian diplomat After her appearance at London. <laughs> What a pity! 
In 1861, about seven years after my beloved sweetheart died, and that time was an obligation for a gentleman like me, I gave the order to put up this burst in Branitz estate. <laughs> Now uh, we want to have a little look on the Chevalier's house. Therefore we have to leave the yard and keep on walking towards the summer house. Today the Chevalier's house is a restaurant. But 150 years ago it was used effectively. My private secretary Billy Messer lodged there with some of my royal officials and even guests had been put up there if you want to be my special guest too you have to keep up with the special Branitz house rules which sounds like this point one complete freedom for the landlord and his guests. Point two. Everyone gets up when he wants to and takes breakfast what he wants and orders on his room. Hmm. Personally, I never go up before lunch. Point three. Lunch in the breakfast room at one o'clock in the afternoon. Point four. If you want to drive out or take a horse ride, please give an order to the Royal Marshal Billy. Eight horses are put at your disposal. Point five. The one and only obligation is to come to dinner at nine in the eve when the tum-tum sounds twice. Only illness and only God may save us from gives you dispense from this obligation. After coffee, any human being is free again. This is the custom of Branson Hall. And there was never a lack of guests at Branitz. <laughs> My dearest friends, it is time for me to go. I regret to say goodbye to you because it was a real pleasure for me to be your silent guide and servant throughout my home, my real personal kingdom, my love and my honor. But even without my personal appearance, you are allowed to rest and enjoy as long as you are in the mood to and your heart is forcing you to stay. Perhaps, perhaps you can enjoy several refreshments inside the rooms of the Chevalier House restaurant. And perhaps you will fall in love with the ice cream bearing my title. And I hope you will do so. It is a real delight for all your sensual feelings. I appreciate. Now, I will give my deepest respect and honor to my appreciate audience. Sincerely yours, Prince of Pückler. <laughs>